Hello, this is Mark from the channel Me Techie, and what I'd like to do is talk to you about ScreenFlow. What is ScreenFlow? Its claim to fame is that it runs on Macintosh and it records your screen, which is called screencasting. So it's the computer screen that you have uh, ScreenFlow installed on. It also captures your audio, and it can capture an additional source or two on top of that. In other words, right now it's capturing my face with a camera, and it can capture the screen all at the same time. It's recapturing the audio using this microphone here. And so that's three sources there. On top of that, I could actually plug in my iPhone or iPad as an iOS device, and that could be a fourth source, all simultaneously recording. There's actually a fifth source if you consider the computer audio itself. Um, so that's pretty amazing that you can capture all those sources at one time. Um, and record that on your computer. So it's perfect for video training, uh, such as what we're doing here today. It's perfect for, gosh, I use it for my music channel, my music YouTube channel, where I demonstrate and train people how to, not how to play the keyboard, but actually how to program their Nord keyboards. So I have a channel on that where I take a camera that records what I'm doing on the, on the keyboard itself. My audio is coming through the microphone and then occasionally I'll record the screen to show them the software and how it integrates with the sound manager and how you can upload and download sounds to the instrument and things like that. So ScreenFlow is terrific. I've been using it for years. I've been using it well before uh, in the version two or three days. Back, That's how far back I go with ScreenFlow. And lately I've been using it on three separate YouTube channels. Uh, none of these channels are super popular per se, but I tend to make about a video a day so we're closing in on a probably well over 300 videos a year uh, at that pace. And I find I use them for internal staff training videos. I train the staff where we make software at the company I work for and work with most of the time. So we're training people on how to use the software that we create. I also train people, let's say if I find a bug in the software, I'll record that, give them um, some input and some feedback and some results and send that back to them. Uh, in addition, I use it for all the YouTube stuff. Every bit of YouTube recording and editing is done through ScreenFlow. So it's a powerful program. There's a lot you can do with it. So that's what it is. Uh, it is available on the Macintosh only. If you're looking for a Windows version of a ScreenFlow-like application, I think the nearest brother to that would be Camtasia. Both of those are paid programs. There's also free software that you can look into, and all of this is readily available on YouTube. You can just put in free screencasting software, and you know you'll get uh, you know half dozen choices, ones that are really popular. Um, but we're focusing on ScreenFlow. So with that said, uh, we really could go on for hours showing you every bit of ScreenFlow. But for now, I'll just show you a couple of things. I'm loading up ScreenFlow eight. Please note that most of the features I'm going to show you here probably work with earlier versions and most likely will work with newer versions. And uh, right now I'm just going to create a new document. The presets for me are uh, 1080p HD, which is basically HD video, uh, 19 by 20 by 1080. That's the width and the height, standard stuff. And the frame rate is 30 and that's good for now. So I'll just create a new document and you'll see I have a blank document. And just to get over the basics, over here behind me, this is the canvas. This allows you to uh, construct and see what it is that you're building. This is sort of the preview screen of what the video will actually look like. And then below here is the timeline. And then this little red uh, tool here is called a scrubber. And you can move this tool up and down through the timeline or left and right through the timeline over time and do things. So let's do a quick recording here. I'm going to go up here to this tool uh, in my you know window bar that allows me to record. But before I do that, I'll click configure recording. And let's just say I want to record the desktop and the um, video, and we'll do the uh, audio too. So I happen to be using my microphone here. So I'll record three sources at the same time. You see I have a fourth source here, record computer audio, which I mentioned earlier. And I have a fifth source here, record iOS device. Now, the only reason this is not illuminated is because I don't happen to have an iOS device plugged in. And you literally have to plug it in. You plug in the iOS device to the USB port on the back of the computer into the actual charging port of your iOS device. So with that said, let me just do a quick recording. I'll hide the screen. Greenflow application. Now I've got a blank desktop and I'll do a quick demo. Okay, in this video, hi, I'm Mark, and in this video we're going to do a quick training. I'm going to bring you to a site called google.com and we'll learn how to do some basic searches. Here you can see 
that I'm now positioned on Google and I'll do a quick search for, let's say, cars. And I'll put in cars and I should get all kinds of results with all kinds of information. If I want to further define my search, I can actually click on the tools bar and choose not any time, but only things that were indexed within the last hour. In other words, new things that appeared on Google just within the last hour. Now you'll see I get a very different search. So this is a powerful and unique way that you can do searching on Google and then redefine your search based on time, which builds in more relevancy for you. Perhaps your search, you only want to search 10 years ago. Very powerful stuff. Okay, so that concluded our lesson. So I'll save that to this existing document that I created, and I'll just call it part one, Google. And the timeline, uh, excuse me, the clips, these are called clips. Uh, here's my face, and that's where the audio is stored. And then this is the clip of the actual computer. So I can grab both of these by just selecting like this, and you know, click and drag and select like that. And then if I hold the shift key, not that you have to hold the shift key, but if you hold the shift key, both clip and audio, both my uh, talking in my head as well as the screen will be presented here simultaneously stacked, which is nice. All right, and, and just to conclude this lesson, what we'll do here is what I normally do is I detach the audio. So I'll grab this right here and right click and detach the audio. That gives me more flexibility so that I can clip my audio uh, separate and distinct from the, from the video portion of my head. And the other thing is too, based on the capture card I'm using, there's a little bit of a delay between the voice and the actual imagery. So you can't hear that now because I didn't record the audio, but I will uh, nudge this four clicks using my bracket key. And that's again, a shortcut key. That's more advanced stuff that you don't have to learn right now. But essentially I've synced these two up. All right, so that's those are the basics of ScreenFlow. Really, I didn't teach you anything other than maybe what it is. Uh, how quickly you can record something, how quickly you can edit it. Maybe you got a feel for all that. But if you want some serious training, um, there's videos on Udemy you can take. I am considering down the road to do a full-fledged training for ScreenFlow. I might start with YouTube first because uh, I really have no audience at this point. All right. Hope you enjoyed this video and thanks for watching.